And welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Night Saber Z42, and I got something way different than I've ever put out on this channel. And this is actually something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I am a huge board gamer. I have like two full closets in my house that are just board game storage. And I actually started collecting board games um, pretty much the year after I got out of college. And one of the first board games I ever got was Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I played that game like a lot. Like, I knew it like the back of my hand, and sometimes I would devote, like, a whole entire day just playing it by myself. Because I kind of lived by myself at the time. Um, but I kind of moved on to other games over the years. Pandemic, and just not even cooperative games, too. And then I started getting into card games, and the first LCG that I got into was the Lord of the Rings living card game and it's a nice solo game that I could play by myself or if anybody was there I, I could play it with them too but I mean you know I tend to just play that one by myself and it wasn't until about a year ago that I started getting back into it and I actually got the Darrow Dwelf cycle and so I playing through that but before that a couple years ago I got into Arkham Horror the, uh, the card game and I had only bought the core set which is what it looks like right here and at the time when I played it I was like yeah it's just kind of like the Lord of the Rings LCG with an actual narrative that connects and for some reason I didn't really like it <laughs> I was off put by one mechanic and that was the the uh, chaos bag for some reason, I didn't like it. I thought that, you know, it could do something a little bit better, like dice or something like that. I don't know. And it wasn't until this whole quarantine thing started that I went back and I started playing the Arkham Horror LCG again. And I went through the entire core set on my own and then when quarantine started I had a friend come up and visit and she stayed with us for about two months and in those two months we had played through the entire course set and we had started the Dunwich Legacy and we got to the penultimate chapter and that was all that I had because Lost in Time and Space was like it was very hard to find and so I actually we stopped at the penultimate chapter and then she had to go back to where she lived. She lives like six hours south of where I live. And so um, we still have not finished the Dunwich Legacy, but we will once she gets back. And in the meantime, <clears throat> I have basically extended my collection. And I want to put this out there at the very beginning because I know this is a very touchy subject <clears throat> for um, people who play tabletop simulator and whatnot. But I own every single, um, I own everything in the Arkham Horror franchise, um, or at least the card game franchise. Um, I have the all of the deluxe edition or uh, expansions. I have all of the Mythos packs. Um, I have it all. The only things I do not have are, of course, the Insmith Conspiracy, which isn't even out yet, and the six. Uh, investigator starter decks which is on pre-order and i will be getting those <laughs> i will be getting all six of the investigator starter decks plus the um insmith conspiracy when they actually release because this game is actually my favorite board game period it used to be the lord of the rings and then i started really getting into this and i have spent so much time just trying to figure out how to sort my cards and store them. I'll probably end up putting a picture like right here so you can see my whole getup. <laughs> it's, I, I absolutely love this game to death. And today I'm going to play through the return to, eh, eh, come on. Return to Night of the Zealot. 
I have not played through this entire thing yet. I had actually wanted to play through it with people, but I think I will start doing this one solo. Um, I am very much new to tabletop role or uh, tabletop simulator. I actually bought this yesterday and got this whole thing set up so I could actually play it and show it for you guys um, because I think it's about time. Like, <laughs> I haven't, um, I never was interested in uh, tabletop simulator until, you know, I started seeing all of this stuff that you could do with it. And I am a huge fan. I'm actually really glad that I got this and um, I, I'm going to enjoy this very much. <laughs> So, in Return of the Night of the Zealot, there are three scenarios. The Gathering, the Midnight Mask, the Devourer Below. Each episode will be devoted into one scenario each. So, there will be three videos for this Night of the Zealot. I don't know if I'm going to continue on or what's going to happen to the series. This is kind of very experimental for me because I love playing board games. And I think it's about time that I actually put something like it on my channel. I might have other people come out and play. And if you are interested in playing and you have Tabletop Simulator and all of these mods, um, hit me up and we can start something because I, like playing this game with other people is actually way better than playing it solo. And I know because I've actually done it both ways. I have, only, I have basically exclusively played this game by myself until um, my friend came up and we actually played it together. And she had never played a game like this before. And she said that she absolutely loves it, mainly because of the narrative. And I agree, the narrative is well, really what makes this game good. <laughs> um, but uh, um, I will not be explaining a whole lot of rules. I don't think that's the point of this series. I just kind of want to relax and play. Um, whoa. Okay. Oh, it's a promo version. Do I want the weird tentacle creeping up all over the Jenny Barnes promo, or do I want just a regular, um, sophisticated, independent woman Jenny Barnes? Uh, probably not. Okay, get rid of that. How come Daisy Walter Daisy Walker doesn't have a promo? Oh well. Anyways, um, so. I will be playing a double-handed uh, two investigator. Um, first up is Jenny Barnes. And uh, here's a little bit about her. Jenny Barnes never guessed that she would be returning to America so soon or under such circumstances. Arkham, Massachusetts is a far cry from Paris, but when her sister's regular correspondence became increase increasingly deranged before stopping entirely, Jenny could not shake the feeling that something terrible had happened to her. As Jenny begins to search for her sister, she quickly realizes that Isabel is not the only girl in Arkham to have gone missing. How might the disappearances be connected? And why do the flyers for the local Harvest Festival depict the face on the medallion Jenny sent to her sister? Oh. So, Jenny Barnes' uh, ability, she collects one additional resource during each upkeep phase, and her Eldritch effect is plus one for each resource we have, which can be pretty good if we can ever draw an Eldritch sign. And then we're also playing Daisy Walker, the librarian, who is our seeker and chief investigator. As a respected librarian at Miskatonic University, Daisy had always felt that books were the most important thing in her life. She explored in fiction what she abhorred in life, horror, violence, and fear. Then she stumbled across the John D. translation of the Necronomicon. It was blasphemous, unholy, and too awful to be read. But, given her studies in obscure and occult studies, Daisy knew there was more truth than fiction within the book's pages. She began to wonder what other secrets the restricted collection of the Orin Library held. It's a little bit about Daisy. Um, as far as deck construction, I will go ahead and flash it right there, but I'm not going to take a look because there is a random weakness that I do not know, and I don't want to know unless until I draw it. So, there you go. I will basically tell you that this is, um, the deck that you can find 
in ArkhamDB.com. It is by one Uncle George the Farmer. And he's basically doing all of these like pre-made sort of decks and analysis. And he does like each investigator in each um, in each uh, campaign, basically. So there is that. And then Daisy Walkers. So these are very much basic, although you're probably looking at this and saying, wait a minute, Jenny Barnes isn't actually in the core set. And you are correct. She is in the Dunwich Cycle. And I actually did not want to do a traditional Seeker slash Guardian run because I think that's kind of what everybody does. And I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. And so I decided to choose Jenny because she's very versatile. Um in her role. She's got three straight across for all of her skills. And some of the cards that I put in there kind of lean her towards the guardian type where she's got some attack, but she could also be pretty good at um, doing lore. Um, she could be pretty good at evading if she needs to. It really depends on what we need her for. And, you know, I got two ladies here that are gonna work together and uncover this mystery. So speaking of the mystery itself, we are of course doing the Return of the Night of the Zealot. And so, what's going on? It is late at night. You are holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few, hour, a few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And we will effectively have three turns, provided that we don't get some of the treacheries that can progress this, um, to complete the act, the first act, Mysterious Gateway. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind a strange getaway gateway to another part of your house. There must be a reason why this is happening. And so our objective is to put six clue tokens on this act to progress or to advance. We are, of course, doing return to the gathering. And so if this wasn't already set up, these is what you would have to substitute your ghouls with your other type of ghouls. And you're using all of this symbol and whatnot and all of this which has already been done for me. We are doing a standard. So all of our chaos tokens are going to go like this. Okay. Um, I never really played on hard or expert. Maybe someday when I've actually played extensively, I will go back and try that. But that is what each of the, uh, tokens does so okay so let's get right into it because i've spent a lot of time kind of just talking about feelings and such and so we start with the investigator phase and so jenny and daisy will start at the study i think i just said that but um um, Jenny does get a uh, little ability while in on this card because she is the lead investigator. Um, double action, draw three cards. Only the lead investigator can activate. Excuse me. Only the lead investigator can activate this ability. When an enemy attempts to spawn at a location that is not in play, put that location into play and spawn that enemy there. Okay. By the way, I absolutely love these little tokens that of the arrows, so you can tell which location goes to where. Oh my gosh, so handy. I wish I actually had that in real life. Okay, so since Jenny is our lead investigator, we will start with her. And the only thing that we really can do, because she's not going to investigate, and actually, before we even do that, I am forgetting a huge... <laughs> something very, very huge. We need to actually, you know... Uh-oh, that is totally not what I wanted to do. 
Okay. Well, how about this? Um, let's go ahead and put those back. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. There we go. Okay. I honestly thought that that would just put it to that area, but I was gravely mistaken, and that is okay. You'll learn. You gotta live and learn. And I will also go ahead and do the same here. That way it is kind of fair. And we shall do it the old fashioned way. How about that? Okay. So, um, where would we draw? Okay, so that actually puts it towards everybody. And I think I just froze it because every time I do, yeah, every time I do uh, control Z, which is undo, it kind of re reloads everything. So, okay, we're good. Sort of. Okay. Weird. So it looks like we're going to just do it the old fashioned way. Actually drawing five cards. Five cards, five resources for every player. And the reason why I actually don't have a color set is because if I had actually chosen yellow or orange, I would always have cards at the bottom here, and I don't want that to be a distraction. So I set myself as the actual game master. So let's see, what does Ginny Barnes have? Let's go ahead and highlight all. Okay, Jenny's twin 45s, physical training, Leo De Luca, flashlight, and a 41 Derringer. Ooh. Starting with Jenny's twin 45s is interesting, but we don't have any enemies on the board. Leo De Luca is going to be straight up what we want to do first so we can get that additional action during our turn. Um, let's see what Daisy has, though. Um, she's got the Necronomicon, so that needs to go back to the deck, shuffle, and then we will draw another card, which is Emergency Cash. Much better. You cannot start your opening hand with a uh, weakness, so... Delve too deep. Not good for us right at the moment. That's something that you would do like as just before the game ends, so you can get that last victory point. Deduction is good. Inquiring Minds, excellent. We got a lot of these skill cards. And I need to also give her five resources. Okay, so um, probably didn't even go over Daisy's ability, but she can take an additional action during her turn, which can only be used on Tome ability. So if we get the old book of lore, which allows us to search the top three cards of a deck, then that would be really good. Unfortunately, her Eldritch effect is plus zero. So if you succeed, draw one card for each tome you control, which we only have like a couple tomes. I think we have like the Necronomicon and um, the Old Book of Lore, which I think is all that we really need because everything else isn't really that good. So let's say that Jenny, before we have her move, uh, I gotta get used to my commands again um definitely want her to move to the guest hall and start unlocking things but i'm actually going to go ahead and have her do one resource we're going to play leo de luca and that's actually going to give us a new action so now we can play four actions on our turn so we're stuck with two more so this goes down to zero. Whoops. There we go. And uh, we're going to move Jenny down here. So that's one of our actions. Investigators in this location cannot take draw actions. And we're going to go ahead and move to the bedroom. Okay. Much better for her. So that's all of her actions. And we have Daisy Walker. Um, I'm for sure going to 
investigate the area that she's in. She's got um, lore of five. So we're going to want to bring this up as much as possible. Although I'm a little leery about using inquiring minds. Because I know that there are some other rooms that are higher than three. And especially given the certain combo for the treasuries, it can go as high as like plus six. So maybe wait on that a little bit. Um, we don't need to use emergency cash just yet. Because the only thing we actually have is delve too deep. And I'm not going to use that anytime soon. So let's see. Three... Five. Let's make it at six. I think that would be actually be good enough. So at six, as long as we don't get the minus four, we should be good. So here's hoping. It's a zero. Cool. So we get both of these tokens. Can I not stack? There we go. Oh, no. Okay, how about this? There we go. Still a newbie at Tabletop Simulator. All right, so one additional clue at that location. Excellent, we didn't have to waste our unexpected courage or inquiring minds. And that means this location is all done. Um, so that was one action for Daisy. Sorry if this is a little uh, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Blurry or a doozy if you're getting nauseous because the camera keeps moving around. So that's two. And then why don't we go to the bathroom? I'm going to try not to waste any actions. Um, I actually did a test recording last night and ended up losing and I did a like, whole analysis of my game and the reason why I lost was because I was I had a lot of downtime with Daisy specifically. So we uncovered a bathroom after you reveal a um, picture chaos token symbol while investigating the bathroom, lose all remaining actions and end your turn. Um, we can definitely do this. Unfortunately, Jenny is here. I'm, I'm probably not going to waste the two actions to go ahead and switch places. Um, that's something I should have been more cognizant of. But oh well. Okay, so the first thing that we got to do, or well, actually, before we even do that, because our round sequence goes to the enemy phase. There are no enemies. And so we go to the upkeep phase. So reset actions. And never did that one, but that's okay. Um, ready all exhausted cards. Each investigator draws one and gets one resource, which Jenny actually gets two. And quick thinking. So if this skill test is successful by two or more, after it resolves, you may immediately take an action as if it were your turn. This action does not count toward the number of actions you can take. That's pretty good. Um... So, let's go ahead and give Daisy that one. And we have Arcane Studies. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a huge fan of these talents where you spend one resource to get plus one, but it can come in handy in a clutch. And so, I will probably actually end up playing that. Okay, but that is actually the end of the full entire round. So we go back to up to the mythos phase. So we will go ahead and put one doom on the agenda. And then each of our investigators will draw one card. And so, all right, for day, for Jenny, we get rotting remains. Test three will, for each point you failed by take one horror. That's not bad. I'm actually gonna do that one untested because I don't want to give up any cards just yet. 
So yeah, I'm not going to give up any cards. So let's go ahead and test Will. It's a minus four, so she takes three Will damage. And this can go to the discard pile. For Daisy, we get Grave Eater. That is horrible for her. She is not a melee attacker at all. She's only got two strength. After Grave Eater attacks, you discard one card at random from your hand. That's really bad. Um, Jenny might come up to save her. Okay. So that's the end of the Mythos phase. So we go to the Investigation phase. And... Huh. Um, it really stinks in a way, but I think what I will do, I'm going to spend two. To give her twin 45s um, two resources. Oh, it's only one and three, huh? Okay. And that's going to be one of her actions. She will then move two, three. And then for her fourth action, she will actually attack the Grave Eater. So we get plus two strength for this attack. Yeah, awesome. Got to put that back. Cool. Um, so she's at five. I'm going to go ahead and use quick thinking to bump that up to a six and minus three. So we beat it by one, which is not two. So we don't unfortunately get the um, two or more. Or we don't get to take another action after. Which is unfortunate, but um, we still do two damage to it. So this is now discarded. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. And we do have one more. Actually, that was it. Because we played a card, move two, three, and attack is four. So that's all of our actions. Unfortunate, but that's the way the game is played. And for Daisy, actually going to go ahead and play Arcane Studies Talents. And that's one, two, and three. I think we're going to go ahead and investigate here. Um, I don't, th yeah, we definitely don't need to play any cards because we're at five. Yeah, minus one. So we actually win that one. So I'll go ahead and take one clue. So we're at three. And let's go ahead again. That is minus two, correct? Uh, minus the number of ghouls, so zero. Okay, yeah. So we also get that clue. And now we're at four. Okay. So that is the entire turn for us. Uh, enemy phase, there's no enemies. So we're going to go ahead and reset everything. And we get to draw one card. Overpower. Nice. And Holy Rosary is really good. We'll probably play that next turn if I have the actions for it. Alrighty. Also, don't forget the resources. That's very, very important. All right, top of the round, we're going to put a Doom token. And then we will go ahead and give each investigator a counter card. The Zealot's Seal. I was about to say Zeal, but it's the Zealot's Seal. 
Each investigator with three or fewer cards in hand must take one damage and one horror. Each investigator with four or more cards in hand tests two will. Each investigator who fails must discard two cards at random from his or her hand. Okay. So I believe both of our players have, yeah, more than three. So this is going to be will of two. Just got will three. And unfortunately, I am not going to give up physical training. So we're going to have to do this one without. Actually, now they're both at three. And they're both in the same spot. So what I could do is have Daisy go ahead and help her out with Unexpected Courage. But they're both equally valuable. So what I think I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to save it for Daisy's check. So zero, we actually passed, thank goodness. And Daisy, um, we're going to use Unexpected Courage so we can pass. So Unexpected Courage, plus one, didn't even need it. <clears throat> That's okay. And so this card can go discarded. All right, very, very interesting. So back to the top of the round, not the rules, not that either. Um, Jenny will, what's Jenny gonna do? What can she play? She can get physical training or she can get the flashlight. And I think the flashlight is going to be a better buy-in for her. Oh, except I can't do that. Crap. No. Can I not? Can I move these cards, please? No? Okay. Well, okay. So, can't put that because this takes two hands. I totally forgot about that. Can I put it, like, in the middle? No? Okay. Whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or I could... Nah, I'm not gonna bother. Um, then we will go ahead and... Play physical training. Might as well. So, that's actually one action. Two... three and gotcha okay whatever I'm gonna just draw one resource how about that okay so that's all of her actions for Daisy we need to get her down to the bottom. And she's only got the three actions, so one, two, and then she's going to investigate. I think it's gonna be the best thing that she can do. Um, it's at, this one's at two. Um, I don't think I need to use arcane studies. I'm gonna do this one uncontested. So that's gonna be zero for the ghouls. And we do manage to get one of the chaos or the clue tokens. So we're at five out of six. So we are almost there. All right, so that's all of her actions. Jenny is already gone. Um, so let's go ahead and collect our new resources. Another physical training. 
One resource and another unexpected courage. I'm glad I got another one of those back. I think there's only two of them in my deck though. It doesn't ever go up to three because there aren't... No, well, actually, I don't know. I know that in the Mythos packs that they give you duplicates of cars, like only up to two, but not three. So maybe the max you can have is two. Um, okay, so we've done the upkeep phase. Hand size is good. So this is going to activate. That's the wrong one. Um, your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed, and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. The lead investigator must decide. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes one, two horror. And I think we're going to have to um, discard a card from all of our hands. So... Uh, the 41 Derringer, not exactly what I wanted to discard, but. Oh gosh, please. Thank you. Um... And we get, okay. I'm not too salty about that one because it is a, uh, actually, can I just, yeah, there we go. Because it's just one experience point that I would have tried to have earned at the end. And yeah, I'm not that fed up about it. Okay, so this can go away. Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the sh darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Okay, so we have about four more turns before this prox. And we are back to the investigating phase, or the, the investigator phase. Um... So, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Got three resources. Let's go ahead. Well, we still can't put flashlight down. <laughs> I was about to say, let's put flashlight down, but we can't. Let's give it a try and see if we can do it. Um, but then again, I don't want to have to discard a random card from my hand as well. It's not worth getting rid of this. I have a question about lead investigator. Does the lead investigator always have to go first? And I think the answer is no, but I want to make sure. Lead investigators sometimes require to make important scenario decisions. At the beginning of a scenario, the investigator choose a lead investigator if they cannot agree on a choice, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it doesn't say that they are the first player. What does... Each investigator take a turn performing three actions. Okay. So why do we have Daisy go first then? Daisy can go first because she can totally nail that without actually having to use any of her cards. So... Oh, and she fails. That's not what I wanted to see at all. The card we get is Unexpected Courage, which in all hindsight is probably the one that I would have rather have had discarded. Okay, let's go again. Okay, that's a zero, so we get the last clue. So that's our second action. 
and we get to go here. And is this an action to use? Only well, investigators in the guest hall may spend. Okay, it's not an action. So we will also go ahead and um, get rid of those. Whoops. And one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. It's not what I wanted. I just want the one. Thank you. The layout of your home is vastly different from its unusual structure. Somehow your guest hall seems to have looped around on itself, and you are stuck with no way to enter the main hallway near the front of the house. You notice that the wall between the guest bedroom and the bathroom is rotted and stained with what appears to be old blood. With no other way to proceed, you have no choice but to bust through the weak, rotted wall. Put into play the set-aside hole-in-the-wall location. Okay, set aside. Yes, yeah, sweet. It was the very first card, so that goes here. And let's see. Choose an investigator in the guest hall. The chosen investigator immediately moves into the hole in the wall and reveals it. Then he or she must pass a four will test. For each point the investigator fails by, he or she must discard a random card from his or her hand. That's pretty bad. And the only person that can do that is actually J uh, Daisy. So Daisy is going to go to the hole in the wall. Test will of four. I don't think there's any cards that she can truly get rid of. Ah, okay. And a question. So, I'm pretty sure I reveal this first. There's no clues, okay. Um, after you reveal this location at Acceler in the parlor, so let's go ahead and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. We'll get that one. we we'll get that one, and the parlor should be next, right? No. Okay, put that back in. Search. Where's the parlor? There it is. Parlors come out to play. We're going to go ahead and clone this. Put it there. And actually, I should probably go ahead and clone these as well. Because these can also connect to that. Okay, so we've already done that. Now Daisy needs to actually test her will. Um, I think I'm gonna spend two resources to get plus one. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, Um, hmm, hmm. Oh, it doesn't actually tell me. Um, free triggered ability. Okay, so page two. Darn, I gotta scroll all the way back. And I kind of just technically looked at the next side, which is like right there to get that information. Um, okay. Triggered abilities, okay. Free triggered abilities. Uh, it doesn't say. Um, I am only gonna spend one to make that a plus four. Um, I'm not gonna give up the rosary just yet. 
Though I might have to. Plus one. Didn't even need to. Okay. So we are ready for the siege. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, so we don't need to discard any cards, which is awesome. Get out of here. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advantage, which we need six. And there's four up there. I don't know why I decided to go ahead and reveal those, because we weren't technically on there. Um, okay, so it is Jenny's turn. And I think the only thing she can do is choose one of those. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm not supposed to reveal. I will actually go ahead and reshuffle those. I think, yeah, the clues have to be the same number, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so there's that. So one, two actions to get her... I don't think there's anything that I want to play, that I can play, rather. So... Um, let's go up here to the attic, and what do we get? There we go. After you enter the attic, take one horn. Oh, boy. That's, that's no bueno. But we actually get these two or we get these four clues and she's actually in a prime location because the shadow for this location is one which is actually really good for her um so that was her third action for her last act let's go ahead and investigate once minus one that's enough to pass so we'll take one of those little clues and we'll put it there. Okay, so that is the end of the round. So we'll pop that. Oh, drawing the sign. Treachery. That's our weakness that we pulled up. Um, put drawing the sign into play in your threat area. Okay. Your maximum hand size is redu what? reduced by five while checking your hand size during the upkeep phase. Are you kidding me? So, fortunately, we are actually at that limit because the maximum hand size is 8. So, minus 5, it makes it 3. Oh my gosh, wow. That's devastating. We have to spend 2 actions to get rid of it, too. Okay. For... What's going on with this card? Um, for Daisy, Ward of Protection... That's, that could be pretty good. Okay, so. All right, that was pretty bad for us. Let's go ahead and get the Doom token, and then we'll go ahead and draw a card for each. Okay. Ancient Evils. This is the card that I absolutely do not like for this specific scenario because it makes it that much easier to lose. So... Um, Ancient Evils is place one Doom on the current agenda, which can actually cause the current agenda to advance. It's how I lost my previous run. And we get Swarm of Rats! No, Daisy doesn't like rats. She's afraid of rats. A horde of cruel rats skitters forth in an undulating wave of claws, teeth, and mottled fur. The good news is, this is a fairly weak enemy. Unfortunate news is, though, we don't have anything to really get rid of that. Unless Jenny wants to come down and save us, but I'm probably not going to waste it. Are we still in the guest hall? 
Yes. Okay, so there are no clues there. All right, so the investigator phase. Definitely going to go ahead and spend two of our actions to get rid of that. So one, two. Whoops. And Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Why don't we, Jenny, why don't we be getting together? Oh, yeah. Um... I say let's go ahead and investigate again. It's time to get a plus one. So that means we get another clue. That's two. And I think I'm going to go again because we have one more action. So let's see if we can get that. Ooh, we get a Eldritch sign, which is plus one for each resource we have, which is five. <laughs> so we get plus five. We dominated that. Um, too bad we're not like Rex, who gets like plus two over. You get an extra clue token or something like that. So, oh well. We'll pull that clue back, place it right here, and that's all that Jenny can do. The uh, swarm of rats we're gonna have to take care of. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we can do. What can we do? I think I'm gonna discard Ward of Protection to go ahead and. Whoops. Okay. To go ahead and fight this off. Did I get rid of my... Yeah, let's put that back in, because I would love to draw it with Daisy. Minus two puts us at one exactly, so we actually pass. Bye-bye, rats. Get away from Daisy, because she don't like the rats. Okay, so that is in our attack action. She's going to go down to the cellar. And this one gets four. Look at that. So... Unfortunately, this one also has a shadow of four. So after you enter the cellar, take one damage. That's not good for Daisy, because her health is pretty low to begin with. Um, so that's a move. We get one more action. What would we like to do? I think... I am going to save Inquiring Minds, Inquiring Mind, in case we have to fight something with Daisy or perform some sort of action. And I'm just going to spend the uh, clue to give us a plus one lore. So we're at six lore. And let's go ahead and draw. Oh, automatic failure. Of course. The only thing that really could have stopped us. So that's our last action. That's kind of a wasted turn, and we don't need those. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and draw two resources. Draw a card, another overpower. Um, shortcut. Play during your turn. Choose an investigator at your location. Move the investigator to a connecting location. Eh, it's okay. All right, man, we really need to get these clues going. And let's go ahead and draw. What do we get? Crypt Chill, test for will. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. If you cannot, take two damage instead. Um, we will most certainly get rid of or spend one resource to give us uh, plus one. So that puts us at four. And I will also go ahead and discard physical training for an extra plus one. So we're at five will. And we get minus one, so that is actually enough to go ahead and pass this. Excellent. 
Oh, another swarm of rats. Yay. Lucky me. Okay, so that's everything that we can do. It's the investigator phase. Um, yeah, we need to make some progress. Jenny's going to go ahead and play or just... Yeah, she's going to straight up draw it for it. Minus four is going to be a failure. Well, actually, that can stay. Um, let us try again. Minus one will succeed. So we get that clue. The last clue. <clears throat> and unfortunately... We can only spend... One here, and actually what we'll do, we'll actually go down there. I'm not going to bother wasting any more actions, because if she doesn't get rid of the Swarm of Rats next turn, we will get rid of it for her. So in the meantime... We're going to have to straight up attack it. And that's very unfortunate. With no bonuses. Minus one is actually enough to get rid of it. Bye bye rats. Arcane studies. Let's go ahead and proc that. So we'll do one for that. Um... Minus one is enough, so we get one. And I'm actually going to play Holy Rosary. I do not want this last clue because it's going to be a waste in my opinion. I think we'll be too efficient and then we'd spend a whole turn doing nothing up here. And that's something I don't want to do. I actually want Jenny with Daisy for what's coming next. Plus, having that plus one will would actually be very good for us. All right, so this is going to progress, and that's unfortunate. A feral beast, roughly humanoid with a canine cast and hooves for feet, tears through the ground in front of you. Below the floor, you can see vast tunnels beneath your house. Fiendish, howling echoes from deep within underground caverns. Shuffle the encounter, discard pile into the encounter deck, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a ghoul enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy. And the lead investigator is, of course, Jenny Barnes. Whoops. Put that there. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Frozen in fear, frozen, another frozen in fear. Ooh, ghoul from the depths. Spawns at the bathroom. That's actually probably the best place for it. Whoops. Oh boy, what did I just do? I wanted to put you there. Put the bathroom there. Um, I wish... I could just pick up and place sideways on top of another card. Okay, so. Um, then, bye-bye. This one is at 10. You hear a crazed howl outside, and suddenly all the creatures turn their attention to that sound. They rush to escape the house, breaking down doors and clawing at everything in their way. So that sounds like bad news, right? So at the end of the enemy phase, each unengaged ghoul enemy moves one location towards the parlor, and we place one doom on this agenda for each ghoul enemy in the hallway or parlor. That's bad news, right? Good news is we're about to progress the barrier. 
And as long as we progress it to the third card in the series, we can actually survive the um, eventual fallout from this going progressing. So, yeah, it's going to be a while before the ghoul gets there. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so now we need to draw. All right. Rotting remains. Test three will for each point you fail by. Take one horror. That can actually be very bad for us. <laughs> so we're going to spend one for will. And now our will's at four and minus one. So that puts us at exactly three. So we take no will damage. Whew, we dodged a bullet from that one. Ooh. That's unfortunate. Spawn at the bedroom, though, so not as bad as we think. Okay. If we could actually kill those, that would be pretty cool. I don't think we're going to kill them, though. Especially with what's about to happen. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and flip all of these. We just need one more clue. So what I think we're going to do I'm going to go ahead and investigate with um, inquiring minds. So that gives us up to eight out of four. So if, even if we get the minus four, we pretty good. Ooh, look at that. Plus zero because we don't have any tomes in play. So um, that is a success for us. So we actually get the last clue that we need from this location. And we are going to... I don't think we need to investigate anymore right now. I think we're done. Oops, not that. I want to move her. So that's our second action. Why don't we go ahead and draw a card? Oh, delve too deep, huh? Very, very interesting. Okay, so Jenny is going to also move up first. So that's one action for her third action. Um... Two. Oh, that's perfect. Actually, that's really good. If I do that, though, she will take some damage. It's not a whole lot of damage, but she will take some damage. Okay, so, no. I'm actually going to play smart for once in my life. Jenny's not going to do anything. Instead, she's going to get a resource. Um, so that was one action to move, one action to draw, one action for resource. And... I'm actually going to go ahead and get another resource. So she's there. They're going to go to the guest hall, and she's going to dynamite blast them for all that they're actually worth. And then she'll go in and pick up the pieces, and that's actually going to give us a lot of victory points right there okay so it is the end of the round so we're going to turn in our six clues that we have jenny actually had way more clues than daisy did which is amazing so that's going to progress this using the barrel from the attic you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier the barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice then hisses and fades out of existence I don't know why I said that word horribly wrong. The bear blocking passage into the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. Okay. Uh, put the set-aside Lita Chantler into play in the parlor. Spawn the set-aside ghoul priest in the hallway. Gosh dang it. Okay, so search for ghoul priest. Lita and... 
Yeah, Lita goes here. Gil Priest goes there. And this is the thing that I was talking about. Um, because this Gil Priest has to spawn in the hallway. Which is going to be very bad for um, Jenny. Bye-bye. A woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing toward you. If the cool priest is defeated, advance. I can tell you right now, we are not going to be able to beat this guy before this progresses. Okay, so that is the end of the round. Um, yeah, this is bad for Jenny because she is actually going to take damage this round. So let's go ahead and do this first. Um, both of the ghouls are going to go there. Ghoul priest is going to engage with, um, Jenny, because she has the highest um, strength. And then it will also attack. Yep, I guess to attack. So she takes two damage and two um, horror. And that's very bad because Huh. Um, I really don't want to have to bomb myself because this thing has 10 HP, but we're not even there yet. We just finished the enemy phase. Um, draw two. Find clothes. Funny. What's the, how do we, it's four to disengage from this punk. Okay. Yeah, um, Jenny's going bye-bye. <laughs> oh, we got art student though. Don't need uh, to play a clue though. That's. Yeah, I don't need any more clues. Okay. Um, so we need to do that. We're kind of screwed here. Um, draw a card. Oh, yay. An acolyte of Umorthoth. Fewest card, praise the fewest cards in hand, which is, okay, well, there's that little glimmer of hope for us, not really. Um... I'm in a real conundrum here. Ancient evils, place one doom on the... Yeah, I figured. We need to get out. Mm, 
there's no way that we can actually get rid of this reasonably well. Not with Jenny. If we had a guardian, possibly, like, oh my gosh, what was her name? Lita? No, that's the lady over here. Um, there is a guardian in the Dunwich cycle. That is actually quite amazing. I've played her before. Okay. I think we are going to accept the fact that Jenny is going to have to go. So what I will do... This is actually not an attack. Whoa, what what happened? Where'd it go? What? Okay. That is interesting. Thank you for that. I don't know what else to say. Um I need to actually see what this does. Parlay is okay, lore four which we can do, because we're gonna go ahead and take one of those. Um, also discard that, so our lore is at six, seven. Oh, I can't even do that, what am I doing? Um, we're actually engaged with an enemy. Um, if I do move though, hold on. Um, engaged, as in not in action, but okay, because I think if I move, they come with me, right? Um, attack of opportunity. Just basically says that if I try to move, they get an attack of opportunity. Okay, so um I think, oh my gosh, analysis paralysis. Ugh. I think the only thing that I can really do is to Choose an investigator at my location, me. Move that investigator to a connecting location. Okay, so we'll play this. Fast means it doesn't count as in, it doesn't take a, one of our actions. I still take the horror and the uh, damage, but we do get to move to the parlor.
we're going to go ahead and parlay. Um, <clears throat> so definitely use the one resource that I never spent. Is there another card? No, okay, just making sure. And art student, that's what I was gonna get rid of. Um, actually, I'm not gonna do that. It's like I keep going back and forth. Um, instead, what I will do I will pay one. Now's the time. Um, draw one card from the top of the encounter deck. Um, you cannot play assets or events. At the end of the round, discard. Okay, fine. And what we get? Little rats. Okay, that's fine. This gets added to the victory display which I'm actually just gonna go ahead and put here. I'll keep it there. That way I can put it back in my deck and then we are going to GTFO. All right, so Daisy is out of here. So this guy can also stay there. Um, that can get discarded because she is no longer in play. Um, okay, so for Jenny, 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 she is going to take some sanity damage. So I think what we're going to do, we're just going to blast these two guys with dynamite. So one, two, three, four, five. Play Dynamite Blast. Um, that's going on to this one. This guy dies. He's going to the victory display. There it is. Oh, that's right. The victory display is actually a uh, set aside area. Fortunately, we didn't get to kill that one which I'm a little burnt out about. And, uh, yep, she is done for. So, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, so that means everybody is out. Um, so... The ground begins to shake and you can see claws rising from the dirt as uncanny creatures desperately try to dig their way out of the ground all around you. Everywhere you turn, you see monsters emerging from the earth. Terrified, you flee as fast as you can. If the investigators are in Act 1 or 2, they are trapped and they die. Since we're in Act 3, they barely escape with their lives, allowing the ghouls to run rampant. Each investigator who has not resigned is defeated and suffers one physical trauma. So that is pretty bad for Jenny. She's going to take one physical trauma and one sanity um, thing. So, uh, um, oops. Whoa, I'm on caps. And uh, Daisy Walker. So, yep. Yeah. Quick question though, do we get to keep? I don't think we keep. Um, Cause nobody actually got Lita. She isn't added to our deck, which is rather unfortunate because she would have been a very powerful ally to have in the coming games. Um, so, we get two victory points, so that's two XP for us. And I don't think there's anything else for us to get. Um, they don't have the guide here. 
So, um, yeah, there is that. So overall, um, I did a lot better in this session than I did in my last one. Um, overall, I'm not entirely, well, definitely Jenny is the weakest link. Actually, no, she's not the weakest link. She actually did things that, she actually did things that helped us out in the end. She, she basically was our second lead investigator, or she was our second investigator um, type. So she actually did help out with that. So, um, I'm not salty about that at all. Um, I think overall though, um, Jenny probably is not the best thing for us here. Um, I need more weapon power. I need more weapons and there isn't a whole lot of weapons for us in this deck. Um, if we had the weapon power, then I think we would be in a pretty good position, but also taking the horror at the very beginning, um, was not very good for us. So there is that. Um, other than that, though, um, we get to progress to the next scenario, which is a lot better than the, la the last one that I did. So um, that will definitely do it for this episode and this video. Um, I will tackle the next scenario, which is um, the Midnight Masks. This is going to be a very interesting one for sure, especially with Jenny and Daisy working together. So let's go ahead and recall everything. Didn't want to recall these cards for some reason. That's very strange. Okay. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, I appreciate tips. Um, if you would like to give me tips on table, uh, tabletop simulator in general, I, that is also much, much appreciated. Um, but if you would like to join in on a game or two or three or five, then definitely go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, you can also email me at nightsaberz42 at gmail.com and then we can definitely set something up. Um, you do need to have Tabletop Simulator though. That is actually a prerequisite. Um, other than that, please give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series and I will see you guys in the next video.